that's listening, we're doing this for you as well. Jesus is the answer, and it's all about him. Uh, thank you, Jason and Jason. I told them, I said, I said, uh, you know, the professionals may have Shane and Shane, but we got Jason and Jason. <laughs> amen, amen. All right, recently, 
some Israeli soldiers back in 2019 discovered the remnants of a watchtower. This watchtower that they found dated back over 3,000 years ago. And archaeologists believe that this watchtower that was found dates back around the time of King David. Now this tower that was made of large stones, these archaeologists that found it and soldiers, at the point now it's only about six feet tall. But it's thought that this tower had once been about 16 and a half feet high and 11 and a half feet wide and would have commanded a view that included the Hebron mountains and the Judean plain. Watchtowers and watchmen held a very serious place in the society during biblical times. I want to invite you to turn with me to Ezekiel chapter number 3. Ezekiel chapter number 3. And I want to bring you a message titled this morning, God's Watchman Over the Souls of People. God's Watchman Over the Souls of People. And let's begin in Ezekiel chapter 3. And verse 16, I hope you have something to take some notes on. And also, if you don't have a copy of the Scriptures, feel free to follow along on our screens. The Bible says in Ezekiel 3 and verse 16, Now it came to pass at the end of the seven days that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman over the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. Yet if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Hold your place there and turn with me now to chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter number 33. And I want to begin with verse number 1 and following. In Ezekiel 33 and verse 1, the Bible says, Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people, and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory, and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, Then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself, but he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require, notice, at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul." 
May the Lord add His blessings to His Word. During biblical times, a watchman had the responsibility to protect towns from surprise attacks and civil disasters. This gave city dwellers outside the walls and inside the walls an opportunity to seek protection and gave the people time to secure the gates and to man their defenses. A watchman while on duty was to remain awake. He was to keep his eyes open. And he was to keep a deep, close look in every direction. A watchman had the responsibility to announce not only coming disasters, but the dawning of a new day. Ezekiel and the other prophets of the Old Testament received a divine appointment from God to be the spiritual watchman over the souls of people. <clears throat> Furthermore, every born-again believer, every disciple of Christ, every Christian... We have been commissioned to be a watchman over the souls of the people around us. God wishes that every Christian would function as a spiritual watchman. I'm speaking on that thought, God's watchman over the souls of people. And in this message, I want to challenge you and make you aware of the duties that are involved in being a spiritual watchman. First of all, I want to point out as watchmen, as watchmen we are responsible for people's souls. Now this responsibility comes uh, by a divine appointment. If you notice back in chapter 3 and verse 17, the Lord says to Ezekiel, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. This was not a responsibility that Ezekiel assumed on his own, but one that was given to him by God. He was appointed and commissioned by Almighty God. And let me tell you, God has done the same for each and every single one of us today. Peter spoke of this appointment in Acts chapter 10 and verse 42 and 43 which says, And he commanded us to preach to people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to judge the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. I want to ask you this morning, are you taking on this responsibility? Are you taking on this responsibility wherein you have been appointed by Christ to declare the gospel message to the lost souls around you in your sphere of life? And then let me say this responsibility gives us an obligation to look after the souls of people around us. In verse 17, Ezekiel had been given this responsibility. This responsibility gave him an obligation. It was an obligation for him to look after the souls of the people of the house of Israel. As a pastor... I have an obligation to look after the souls of people in this church. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give an account. As believers, we have an obligation to share the lost, to, uh, with the, share the gospel to the lost. Uh, around us. Paul describes that obligation. In Romans chapter 1 and verse number 14, he says, 
And you and I can take that same word that he says here to heart. He said, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. What was he a debtor by? What was his debt about? His debt was he owed it to every person around him to share the matchless gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as watchmen, we have a responsibility to look after the souls of our fellow man. Secondly, I want to point out another duty of the watchman. And that is as watchman number two, we are to relay a message. We're to relay a message. Now hold your place there in chapter 3 and look over in chapter 33. In chapter 33, look with me at verses 7 and 8. Let me see, show you here. Verse 7 says, So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear word from my mouth and warn them. Now notice there. This message is of a divine origin. It's a message from God to humanity. And the gospel message is the greatest message of all. It's the story of God's redeeming grace for lost sinners. And you and I have been commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ to proclaim His gospel. You say, preacher, what is the gospel? What is the good news? The good news is that the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead. That is the good news. The good news is that Jesus Christ paid our debt as sinners, paid our penalty as sinners, so that you and I don't have to so that you and I don't have to. And you know the Apostle Paul as he proclaimed the gospel message to the believers in Galatia. He said, I didn't get this message from man. I didn't come up with this message on my own. But I'm proclaiming the gospel that was given to us by the Lord Jesus himself. And so the good news is a message of divine origin. It's a message of warning. Now, a watchman, part of their ministry, their office, their duty was to give a warning. A warning they were to sound out. A warning they were to declare. A warning that was to be heard. A warning that was to be heeded. And you and I, as spiritual watchmen, we are to warn people of the truths of God's holy word. We're to warn people of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you believe one day Jesus is really coming again? Folks, He's coming back not as a lowly servant, but He's coming back as King of kings and Lord of lords. And I don't know when the day or the hour will be, but bless God, He is coming back one day. And we need to be ready and we need to warn those around us that the King of glory is coming again. It's a message to warn the people of the second coming. It's a message to warn the people of the great day of wrath that's coming onto this earth. In Revelation 6, 17, the Bible speaks of the period of tribulation, the great tribulation that will be upon the earth. And the scripture says, For the great day of His wrath is come. Who is able to stand it? The scriptures speak of that time as the day of Jacob's trouble, the time of travail. And folks, I want to tell you when the Lord Jesus Christ raptures the church out of this world, folks, there is going to be an outpouring of God's wrath on this world like never before. And we need to warn men and women and boys and girls that the wrath of God, the day of the Lord is coming. We need to warn people of the fact of death. Hebrews 9 and 27 says it's appointed unto man once to die and what after this? The judgment. And let me tell you, death is an appointment that you and I cannot cancel. It's an appointment that we cannot avoid. It's an appointment that we will face one day. Warn people of the fact of death. Ask them when you breathe your last breath here, when you close your eye in death, Where will you be then? Will you be in heaven in the presence of the Lord or will you be in a place called hell? 
We're to warn people of the great day of judgment that is coming. You see, God has appointed a day on which He will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom He's ordained. And He's given assurance of this to all by raising this one Jesus from the dead. One day, God the Father is going to give the throne of the universe to Jesus Christ and He is going to be the judge and He's going to separate the wheat from the tares. He's going to separate the wheat from the sheep from the goats. And on that day, He will sit on His throne in righteousness and justice. We're to warn people of the eternal lake of fire. In Revelation 21 verse 8, the Bible says, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Folks, all of us, unless the Lord tarries His coming, will have to die one time. But brother, dear sister, you don't want to die the second death. The second death. Warn people. It's a message of warning, a message from God. But also this message as spiritual watchmen over the souls of people around us is a message with an opportunity. It's a message with an opportunity. What are we sharing? What are we declaring? Yes, we're declaring a message from God. Yes, it is a warning. Yes, it is a sobering word. But it's also a message of opportunity. What is that opportunity? It's the opportunity to be saved. The Bible says, Behold, today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 13, For whosoever, and you can put your name in that scripture, and you can show it to anybody else, and they can put their name in that scripture, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's an opportunity for them to be saved. But it's also, listen, it's an opportunity, this message from the watchman about... A message that one day will be unavailable. Proverbs 27 and 1 says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Genesis 6 and 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. Do you remember how Noah was building that ark? And he preached righteousness all of those years. And he told those around him that the flood waters of God's judgment was going to pour onto this earth. And God was going to destroy all living things upon the earth during that time. But the good news was if they believed God, if they trusted God, They could enter this ark of safety and be saved from the flood waters of God's judgment. No doubt there were men and women and boys and girls who laughed at Noah, who mocked at Noah. While they had never seen rain before, the Bible says that the 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 earth would open up and water would come out of the earth. Rain had never happened before on the earth. But Noah says, God's told me I'm going to rain waters down onto this earth and there's going to be a great flood and devastation to follow. No doubt they laughed and said, "Why, that old man, he's crazy. He don't know what he's talking about. That man, he's a religious nut. He doesn't know what reality is all about. But Noah preached and Noah was faithful building that ark, providing a place of safety for those people. And eventually when it started raining, the Lord closed Noah and his family inside that ark. What happened? The opportunity had passed. The opportunity to believe God had passed. The opportunity to trust the Lord had passed. The opportunity to flee the wrath to come had passed. And as watchmen for the Lord, we must realize the urgency 
of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we also need to understand the urgency of men and women and boys and girls around us responding to that gospel as well. Thirdly, there's another duty I want to point out. And as watchmen, we are to be faithful in our position. Now let me say, as watchmen, we're never to be slack. We have been given a command by God to constantly, continuously, until the end of the age, to declare the gospel to all people. And when we do, we're to do so with urgency and fervency and not be slack. In the Bible times, a watchman could be slack in their position. Isaiah 56, 10 says, His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. And folks, as watchmen, spiritual watchmen, we should never be slack but faithful in fulfilling the Great Commission. Then I noticed something else. We should not only never be slack, but we should never be silent. We should never be silent. In Isaiah 62 and verse 6, the Bible says this about being silent as a watchman. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You shall make mention of the Lord and do not keep silent. You see, a watchman was to make known the serious news at hand. They were to to let it out. They were not to hold it in. You know, that's kind of like Jeremiah. The Bible tells that they tried to silence Jeremiah and get him to quit speaking a message from God. And he even got upset at the Lord himself and said, Lord, I'm not ever going to speak about you again. And as he said that, right after there was a burning inside of his bones and he couldn't hold it in any longer and he had to let it out. You know what, folks, as watchmen, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to get us a good case of the can't hold it in anymore. Can't hold it in anymore. You know, in the book of Acts, the religious Jews tried to hush up the disciples in Acts 4 by threatening them saying, we're going to put you in jail if you continue to speak about this man that you say was crucified and raised from the dead. In verse 18 and following, the Bible says, So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For listen, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. What were they saying? We've got such a case of the can't help it. We've seen the one who was crucified. We've seen the one who was buried. We've seen that one who was risen from the dead. And it thrills our soul so much that we have to let it out, that we have to tell others about it as well it's got to come out a watchman was to always be relying on what he sees Ezekiel as the watchman for the souls of Israel was to relay this divine message that God gave him and as watchman over the souls of men and women and boys and girls around us we have something to say as well And it's a message that not just the preacher has to say or just the deacons has to say or the Sunday school teacher has to say or the WMU leader has to say. It's a message that all believers must declare and proclaim around us. God's amazing grace. And then in becoming aware of our duties, fourthly, I want to point out one final duty here and that is... As watchmen, we are to tell the truth to people no matter how they respond. Now, this is very important, so pay attention to what I'm about to say. Let me say we're to tell the truth even when it's unheeded. Have you ever shared the gospel to someone before? Have you ever talked about Christ to someone before and they ignored you? Or they said, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to talk about it. Maybe sometime later. 
Folks, you can't make someone accept the truth. We're simply as watchmen, God's messengers. We are to give men and women and boys and girls an opportunity to respond whether it is positively or negatively. Sometimes we will be rejected, but remember... When the gospel is rejected, when the message of the gospel is shared, it's not the messenger that's being rejected, but the message that's being rejected. Keep that in mind. Jeremiah 6 and 17 says, Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not listen. Now the question is, why should we tell the message to people around us knowing that they may reject that message? Nobody likes to be rejected, do they? Nobody likes to be shunned. No one likes to be mocked. No one likes to be laughed at. So why should we put ourselves out there in sharing the gospel to that neighbor, in sharing the gospel to that co-worker, in sharing the gospel to that classmate, in sharing the gospel to that family member? Why should we put ourselves out there? Look at verse 18 of Ezekiel 3 again. The Bible says, When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his way, to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Now catch that. Verse 19. Yet if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Here this scripture is telling us that we're to tell the truth, God's message to people around us so that their blood will not be on our hands. As I think about that, I wonder how it would be If we could look at our hands as God looks at our hands. I wonder how it would be. What we would see if we could see our hands as Almighty God sees our hands. I wonder if we would see blood on our hands. The blood of some soul that we should have witness to. The blood of some neighbor that we should have shared the gospel with. The blood of some co-worker. The blood of some classmate. The blood of some family member that we should have pulled aside and give them a warning and the good news of the gospel before it was eternally too late. I think about in my middle school and high school days going to school with a young man And I was around him, sat beside him some in classes. Walked past him in the hallway many times. I can see his face now. And then after we all graduated high school, this young man had an accident on a motorcycle and died. I remember coming home that weekend from... Bible college and working at the funeral home and when I was vacuuming I walked into the chapel and there his body lay there in that casket and I thought to myself where is he now I don't know where he is but I know one thing about it I never told him about Jesus I never told him the good news I wonder if some of his blood when God looks at my hands I wonder if it's a dripping off of my hands I wonder if that's something I'll have to give an account of at the judgment seat of Christ we must tell people it clearly says if you don't tell then their blood I will require at your hand, the blood will be on your hands. I read a story about a drawbridge 
And it said that as steamboats came up the river, the drawbridge had to be raised so that the boats could go through. Well, one day there at this drawbridge, there was a small boat that came by, and he said, Hey, open the bridge. And the man operating the drawbridge answered back, I can't because the train will be through soon. I can't open it. And the man said back, But I'm a small boat, only a moment or two, and I will be out of the way. And it said that the operator raised that drawbridge up and the boat went through. And before the boat got all the way through, it said that you could hear the screaming whistle of that oncoming train. And the operator of that train was blowing the whistle, but the operator of the bridge was not able to get the drawbridge back down in time. Sadly, there was a serious wreck. Scores of people were hurt, some even killed. It said that the man cried as he was questioned about it shortly after. He said these words, and I quote, Oh, if I had only done what I should have done. Oh, if I had only done what I was supposed to do. You see, you and I, we've got an obligation to be a watchman. As Christians, we must share the good news to the lost world. As Christians... We must share the gospel to those who are perishing. As a watchman, we need to sound the warning. The old hymn says, Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin in the grave. Weep for the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it. Strength for thy labor, the Lord will provide back to the narrow way. Patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. I want to ask you this morning, will you fulfill your duty as a watchman over the souls that God has placed in your life? Let's stand to our feet. Father... In Jesus' name, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for the challenge. God, I thank you for the conviction. God, I pray that every one of us as believers here will take this message very seriously. God, when I stand before you, I want to stand there as a watchman that's been faithful. I don't want to come into your presence at the judgment seat with the blood on my hands of lost people that I should have witnessed to. That I had an opportunity to share the gospel with. God help me and help every one of us here at Baylaton. Lord, I pray that you'd speak to hearts and I pray that you'd take this message and God raise up the watchman in our midst to sound the gospel trumpet. Lord, use us and help us in Christ's name. Amen. If God's speaking to your heart, I invite you to come. If you need to be saved, I invite you to come and let me pray with you. If you need to come and pray over some lost soul in your life that's around you, you're burdened for them. Maybe you need to come and pray and say, God, give me a burden. God, open the door. Give me an opportunity to share the gospel with them. Is the Spirit of God speaking to your heart? Would you come as we sing, Miss Amy? 294.